Have you ever been tempted to give up on somebody, thinking they'll never come to faith in Jesus Christ? They'll never embrace the forgiveness that Jesus has to offer. You think, well, they're too antagonistic, or they're too hardened, or they're too cynical, whatever it might be. What about end-of-life challenges or mental health challenges like dementia or Alzheimer's? Is that person beyond hope? Is there a chance for that person? Well, welcome to the Full Life Podcast by Grace Church, where we hope to inspire, challenge, and clarify your next steps in faith. I'm David Lawson, and we're going to be talking about the God who is greater, the God who is greater than any hardened heart or any mental health challenge that anybody might be facing. And with me today is Noah Marty, because Noah has seen the God who is greater at work in his own family. Welcome, Noah. Glad you could be with us. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thank you for giving this opportunity for this story to be conveyed and shared to everyone. Yeah, it is a gr- it is a great story, and I'm looking forward to everybody hearing about it. Now, not everybody knows who you are, so why don't you just take a moment to introduce yourself. My name is Noel Marty. Um, I've been going to this to Grace for probably about a year and a half, um, and it's just been awesome. I've been getting to know the people, the staff here. Um, I've joined a young adults program they have here, and um, I love it. This place is awesome. And through it, I've seen God work. I've seen God's hand in the ministries here. I've seen God's hand in the people here. Um, and so it's just a blessed place to be. Mm. And um, seriously, I, I love it here. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, well, it's good having you here. And when I heard this story, I, I just, it my jaw dropped. And so uh, I'm hoping that other people are inspired by it like I am. So this is really a story about your grandpa and about what God did in his life. So let's start by getting a little bit of a background about who your grandpa was. Obviously, you grew up with your grandpa. You were his grandson. And uh, tell us a little bit about some memories that you have of your grandpa growing up. Um, So the way I was with my grandpa, and it was the same experience with a lot of my cousins, um, is we only really saw him at family um, gatherings, Mm -hmm. and which we met a, a lot in the younger days of my life, we used to always meet on Friday nights and the whole entire family would get together and we'd get to hang out with um, all the aunts and uncles and cousins. And, you know, there's there's plenty of them, right? And so it was an awesome time um, to get to know my family and grow up with them. And my grandpa, he was always just the jokester, right? He was always making jokes. And, and so um, growing up as I became older and seeing my grandpa, um, he didn't have too much involvement in our lives. Mm. But he um he never changed is he was just always the joke guy and you know it never really went past that though um and so the background with him in his faith is that he didn't get um the message of it mm. ever mm. um oftentimes you know a lot of people in my family um tried preaching the message to my grandpa and oftentimes he'd disregard it he wouldn't listen to it he would um just shut it down always mm. right um, and so it was, it was kind of discouraging to a lot of my family, like as they watched my grandpa, cause they're like, you know, deep into the faith. And yet there's someone who's a critical part of the family who's not with them, mm. you know? And so this is where Christ splits households, it seems. Mm. And so uh, that was kind of my grandpa growing up. And in the latter days of his life, um, maybe the last couple of years he was living is he became pretty grumpy mm. and his his heart became pretty hardened mm. as well. Mm. And so, you know, it just came to one of those things where a lot of the family didn't see him often mm. and he didn't see others often. Mm. Um, and I don't really have like a lot of like time spent with my grandpa. You know, I don't have, you know, a lot of fond memories mm. um, except for those childhood moments, you know, mm. cause there wasn't much involvement between us. Mm. However, um, over the over the years, you've got I've, we've got to see who he is as a person, how he grew up, and we've heard plenty of stories because mm. that's what our family loved doing is telling yeah, stories. Yeah. So, your grandpa was surrounded by people of faith, right? I mean, um, his wife, your grandma, was mm. a woman of faith, right? And uh, even, of course, uh, your your family is. But um, and you said a lot of people were talking to him about it how as you got older and you started getting past the being you know enamored with his jokes and having a good time because it was grandpa as you got older faith became more real for you tell us a little bit about how 
you were feeling about the condition of your grandpa, where your grandpa was. Well, how was the how was the family feeling about it? Um, oftentimes, my family would um, come to a lot of arguments and disagreements about his his way of life and what he was doing, and he was he was doing things a lot of people wouldn't approve of. Hmm. Um, and so, like my family, oftentimes wouldn't know how to deal with it. And I know myself. Um, I I saw my grandpa truthfully as someone who was like, man, like he's already been shared the gospel. Mm. Like, you know, that's sad. And there wasn't hope. And it's a beautiful thing we share this story because it's, and it's important to share how I saw it before and how everyone else yeah. saw it before is that yeah. there was not a lot of hope. Yeah. So what did family gatherings look like then? Like with Christmas, you know, these very faith kind of Easter, Christmas, that sort of thing. Was he... Did he tend to be a little antagonistic toward it? Did he, was he just passive about it? How, what, what was the what was the mood like at the family gatherings? Passive participation. Okay, so I'd, I would describe it as involvement mm-hmm. in whatever practices we were doing. Prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, so did he go to church? He went to church rarely. Okay, not often. Um, my grandma went often, and he just didn't tag along because their marriage became a little unstable. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. but she, they both believed, you know, divorce is not, not an option. Yeah. Right. And so that barrier where my grandma was so deep into her faith and my grandpa wasn't, and they disagreed in a lot of places. Um, you find that there wasn't equal yoke there. And so it led to a lot of problems in their marriage. And so I know my grandma was definitely like, I've I've heard I've talked to her about it. She was disheartened too, mm. you know. And so like it was a rough it was a rough thing to try to reconcile um, the relationship with our grandfather when faith wasn't a part of it because mm. there's a lot of disagreement. Yeah. So what? How were people thinking about your grandpa? How how were what what was your attitude toward your grandpa related to faith? Not that you were angry with him or anything like that, but and you talked about being disheartened. But when it came to your thoughts about the salvation of your grandpa, whether that would even happen or not, how were you and how were other people thinking about it? Um, I think we've all heard the story of the man on the cross next yeah. to Christ, and he's in the last day of his life or last couple of days, and he's like, Christ, like, remember me and, you know, salvation was happened there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem like it in that moment when you watch someone Mm -hmm. push away the faith Mm -hmm. through all the years of their life. And especially hearing from my, from my dad, um, as he was um, in faith, like most of his life and always going to these church events and everything and never had the support from his dad, Mm -hmm. never had the support from his dad. And so over the years, um, you know, even if you follow Christ, it's hard. That's hard because it hardens my dad's heart mm. time after time again, message being rejected, my grandpa not listening, and all my other family members having the same experience. Yeah. Everyone mm. loses hope there, mm. you know? Yeah. And and you lose a lot of perspective too because it's like, yes, God can save, but it just doesn't seem like it sometimes. Mm. Mm. And that's our, our mistake, right? Yeah. So... He, your grandpa passively went along with the family activities at Christmas and Easter and so forth, but really he was very active in pushing away the faith, right? Yeah. So what would, what would, what would those conversations be like when someone tried to share Christ with them, share the gospel with them, uh, either one-on-one or the topic would come up at a family gathering or whatever? What, what was his reaction? What did he, is, is there anything that he said? Is there anything that he did? He would just like, utter like mutter Mm -hmm. it's just words and you just be like it's whatever you know Mm -hmm. push it away he'd say yeah 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 disagree you know and words don't mean anything if if the heart's not involved his heart wasn't involved and that was evident for those who who shared with them and so it it was discouraging for Mm -hmm. them Mm -hmm. i know that because i've heard their their testimonies about it yeah i had an uncle who was visibly antagonistic. He wasn't, you know, he was never violent or anything like that. But, um, and a lot of us, you know, prayed for him on a regular basis. He heard the gospel on a, on a regular basis. And, you know, whenever we'd have family gatherings and we'd pray 
you know, he would, you could hear him, you know, huffing or whatever, you know, in the background, you could tell he was not participating at all, wasn't hardly even being silent during it while someone else was trying to pray. And it was just like, this is never going to happen. I mean, this is just, and I think everyone in the, in the family felt like this is, this man is never going to embrace faith. That's probably how you were feeling about your grandpa. Yep. But then something happened. Uh, there was a time toward the end of your, your grandpa's life where he started getting dementia, right? It was dementia. Um, when was he diagnosed with that? Um, probably about, well, he always, they had signs of him getting okay. dementia um, for probably months before he passed. Um, but it became severe-ish two weeks before he passed. Two weeks. Two weeks. Wow. Okay. So he's diagnosed with dementia. Everybody's seeing this happening. Uh, as a man of faith who knows that your grandpa was antagonistic toward faith, at the, at the very least rebuffed it, uh, what were you thinking now? in terms of the prospects of him coming to faith in Jesus? Well, if there wasn't hope before you add a mental illness up to it, yeah. it gets worse, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not like that adds any hope. That makes it only harder to believe that he could be saved. Yeah. So there's someone in your family, though, who didn't give up. Mm -hmm. It was your grandpa's nephew. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So it was a week before he passed, and wow. he shared with him, the gospel, one more time. So your, your, your grandpa's nephew decided he's, got, he's still got life and breath. I'm, I'm gonna try one more time. Mm -hmm. And he goes to see him mm -hmm. and he shares the gospel with him. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that was different this time is that he could see him accepted. My grandpa accepted the message. Mm. Agreeance mm. with heart behind it. Mm. So. What did, what did, what did, how did he describe that? What is it that he saw that he was describing? What I know is that he shared it and he was confident that he was found Christ. Mm -hmm. Like the man who shared faith to him mm -hmm. was able to tell another person, yeah, mm -hmm. he accepted it. Wow. Great stuff. I think in a conversation with you, uh, you told me that um, this man said, that your grandpa had indicated, yeah, I think I need that forgiveness. Cause he talked about the forgiveness and he said, yeah, I think I need that forgiveness. Is that right? I yeah. believe so. Now I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. I wish I was there to see it. I wish I was there to listen to my grandpa. Yeah. Cause I believe that the old life has passed away when mm -hmm. you when you find Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would have loved to see who my grandpa was in that moment. Yeah. Now, did you get any assurances after that? You heard the testimony of your grandpa's nephew uh, about that, but uh, what what assurances did you get after that? Now, I believe the the signs that we were given after is the peace that God gave our family about mm. it. Because God saved his child already, mm. but we were the ones who were disheartened and didn't have hope. Mm. And so the signs that God gave our family is that, Whenever someone has dementia, you have them do mail, right? It helps because you write down your name a hundred times, your address a hundred times, right? And so he was filling out his mail one day and it asked for his employer and occupation. And this was three days before he passed. Hmm. He put down for his employer, it said God and Jesus, and his occupation was retired. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. And then... It was probably a couple days before he passed. Another piece of mail just put, Jesus loves me. Wow. Wow. Game changer. Game changer. Yeah. So what was the reaction of the family when they found out about this? So I remember I was sitting at my dining room or the dining room table and my aunt was over. Mm -hmm. And she was sharing us this message and she had pictures of the mail that he wrote. Hmm. And it was showing, look at this, look at this. And you know, I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow. And she's sitting there and it's like, isn't it amazing? Hmm. My parents behind her, like, yeah. we, we all marveled, marveled at how God worked through it, worked through dementia to save their dad. Hmm. Like to me, it was my grandpa, but that was their dad. They saw their entire life push away faith. And it wasn't until 
it was in the midst of a mental illness, mm. you know, that they got to see salvation of their father. Mm. That's what the Lord used. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So you've reflected on this a lot. Uh, you and I have talked about it a little bit. Um, and so you've been reflecting on this a lot and just trying to figure out, okay, wh wh what should I be thinking about this? You know, uh, what, what life lessons, spiritual lessons uh, has God been teaching you as a result of what he did for your grandpa? And I think this story speaks such an evident message and one that I've struggled with. And I know you talked about with your uncle, everyone struggles with this is that we try to put ourselves in the place of God and judge someone else's salvation. And we sit there and look at someone, they pushed away the gospel. They're never going to believe, you know, see the way someone acts. I just don't think they're ever going to come to Christ. I don't think they're going to be saved. They pushed away their whole lives. This story speaks that God can save anyone at any time. Mm. We don't know when someone's going to pass, but we also don't know when someone's going to save, when someone can be saved. You know, like it is only God who can do that. And so rather than speculating someone's faith, if they're going to be saved and try to rely on our own wisdom for that, which is foolish, now we can have confidence because of a story like this mm. that God can save at any time. And so there's confidence we can have in our God now. And it's it's not like the story creates that, it reminds us. Mm the story of, of Christ with that sinner on the cross, another reminder, another reminder. And so it's this constant readjustment of like, God can save that person. I, I, I should have confidence. I need to have confidence that God can save that person. Mm. And that lesson is just, that's what it speaks to me mm. completely. And then it speaks to another message that if, if you have a loved one, who's going through something where it seems impossible for them to believe. It could be the same thing. Like they pushed away their whole lives and then a mental illness gets thrown on top of it, diagnosis, um, and, and, it's, and it's horrible. It's bad news. And it seems like it's impossible. There's no excuse to stop spreading the message. Hmm. Never. Because we never know what God can do through it. Yeah. You know, God can work the miracle through our proclamation of the gospel by the spirit he gives us to work in any way he deems right. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, hearing oftentimes is the last thing to go for somebody who is dying. And um, we have this hope that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so as long as that person has breath, there's no reason, and I've done this before, um, yeah, there's no reason not to go to that person and just start reading the gospel message. Just start reading the scripture to them because um, as long as that person is alive and as long as they can hear the word, the spirit can be at work in their life and that transformation possibly can happen. That's the hope that we hold out. Your grandpa's story helps us, um, you know, reminds us that this is a power th powerful thing that, that God can do in the lives of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I reflect on the Apostle Paul's uh, words that, um, that God can do immeasurably beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. And uh, this is one of those stories for sure. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts you want to share, any other thoughts you want to share with anybody who is listening about maybe a, a lesson beyond that that you've learned or maybe an encouragement that you want to offer to somebody. Mm -hmm. Go and spread the word. Go and spread the word. <laughs> I like that. It's that simple. Um, don't be confident in what you can do by spreading the word. Mm. Be confident in what our God can do through you. Yeah. Well, thanks for passing this on. Appreciate that. We're happy for you and for your family, of course, for your grandpa. Uh, one day, can you believe it? One day you will see him again. There was a time in your life you thought there's no way that that's going to turn out that way, that uh, there will be a day when you'll be able to rejoin him in heaven. That's great. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this Full Life podcast. Great to have you along with us and hope that you've been encouraged by the story you heard from Noah about uh, the God who is greater, the God who is greater than any hardened heart, the God who is greater than any kind of mental challenge anybody might face. If you don't have a church home, you're welcome to join us at Grace Church. You can go to graceforohio.org. You can learn about our 
um, in person and our streaming times. And in the meantime, remember that you have uh, that God has uh, come to you that you might have life and you might have it to the full. And we encourage you to pursue the full life that Jesus has for you. 